Sedona does create an inspiration in people because they are, they're awoken, their senses are awoken to the power of nature when they come here. It makes me proud to see how people react that visit here. And there is a look in their eyes that they have when they see the artwork that is in this community. It's profound, it's amazing. There's a lot of artists here and I like that, you know. I just think of all the times that I've enjoyed Sedona. It's a personal relationship and a personal journey to making a piece of jewelry and to hiking in nature. The art that we create, whether it's music or writing or painting or sculpting or dance, it goes out and it helps the world. And that's, that's what Sedona's about, and I feel it really strongly. I've handled the bears, I've handled the mountain lions, and there's nothing better than handling the animal and at the same moment reach over and touch your piece. And that translation from touching the animal to going to your piece is just magic. It sends chills up my spine. So here we are out of Africa, so what I will do is I'll just roll into the parking lot and I won't think about any particular species I want to sculpt and just know that when I see it, I'll know it. And it could be something as simple as a macaw or it could be an African lion, who knows. But when I see it, I'll know. A lot of what I do, I feel, is like a weightlifter would do in the gym. You're just training, and the more exercise I get with species of animals I may not be that familiar with, the better I'm going to be. And I don't care if it's going to be something that's going to be castable or it's just going to be on the shelf for the rest of its life in clay. It'll never change. Photographs flatten everything out. And so when you're working in three dimensions and you don't have that quality of the third dimension there in a photograph, you're gonna get in a lot of trouble. If you're really excited about a piece and you're really inspired, I can't get that from a photo. But if I have the actual animal in front of me, I don't care if it's an African lion or an aardvark, to me it's a living creature and I love trying to capture that spark of life that I see in front of me. And a photo will never, ever do that for me. So here I am, having been to Alaska several times, seeing grizzly bears from a distance through my binoculars, going to zoos and seeing grizzly bears. Now I'm actually in an enclosure with a grizzly bear that's very passive, he's imprinted, and the handler's there working with me and the bear. So I set up my portable sculpting stand, and the orders from the handler was, you were gonna stay right here next to the vehicle with the passenger door open, if something happens, you get in the vehicle. As he was about 50 feet away with the bear, having it do the things I wanted to do to sculpt, uh, about three days of this sculpting, and I'm at the front of the vehicle, I'm pretty happy with the piece I'm working with. And then the handler on the, day, on the third day says, would you like to touch the bear? And uh, the answer is yes, absolutely. So the protocol was I was to walk behind the handler, up to the bear, reach around the handle like it was his hand, and let the bear smell it. So we did, and when I reached around, the bear smelled the palm of my hand and started nursing on my hand instantly. So the handler said, well, that's a sign of acceptance from the bear, come around and see him. And when I walked around him, I could not believe what I was seeing, it was this massive, uh, it was like a five gallon bucket with hair on it that was huge. And then I looked at my piece and thought, it is so lacking. At that same time, as I've got my hand out, the bear exhales on my hand. 
and it was like a draft horse breathing on me, then the volume and the mass of that animal made perfect sense to me. That sense of the air hitting my hand changed that piece and every bare piece I've ever done ever since. The adrenaline rush never stops until you've gone too far. And so what'll happen is, well, I'll give you a good case in point. I, I was doing a wolf piece and I loved the face on it. I had the expression the way I wanted it. And it was one of those situations, as I was saying earlier, where every application of clay meant something. And I wanted to convey this tired mother, but very content because she has four cubs with her. And I had it really well done, I thought, for a field piece. And I knew it wasn't quite done, so I asked my wife, Is this, does it look a little unfinished yet? And she said, yes, it does. So I thought, okay, how many strokes with my tool will it take to go from what looks a little rough to finished? And on, on that entire wolf face, I counted 18 strokes in about 30 seconds. So I can go from a total adrenaline rush, knowing the piece is working, to a sick feeling in my stomach after too many strokes. And knowing I've erased something I really worked hard to get. So I have to get it back. And once I get that back, I know that's my barometer for if you keep messing with it, you're gonna ruin it. And I stop, I make myself stop. And so then that's when the chills run up your spine and you can sit down and look at it and think, man, that was a blast. What a great ride. It was, it was exciting, it's scary, it's, it's invigorating and it's the uncertainty of not knowing. I can take a chunk of clay and say, okay, how am I gonna turn this chunk of clay and give the animal some reverence in my clay? And to be able to kind of convey that is a total drug for me. Sometimes I surprise myself about how good a piece will come out and there are other times I'll surprise myself how bad a piece will come out. So I think there's just the perfect mix to keep me on my toes and keep me humble. Um, I think I've learned the worst enemy of any artist is ego. And the minute you think you've mastered your profession is the minute you stop learning. And I never want to stop learning. I think it's so important to look beyond the piece you're doing and know that there's another level you're going to get to that you're going to be even happier with if you keep the frame of mind that you'll never master it. And I have enough pieces that humble me to really keep my feet on the ground and know that um, it makes me appreciate the pieces that do come together even more because I know the, the 20 that failed before that are nothing more than the exercise I was talking about.